It's Wednesday, November 10th, and time for your Bible list to be morning news update. Government to intervene in a dispute brewing between some customers and a local commercial bank following claims by clients that they are being rushed into making decisions regarding the proposed transfer of their registered retirement savings plans. Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strong, said on Tuesday he would investigate the claims to try to get to the bottom of the issue involving CIBC First Caribbean International Bank. Emmanuel Joseph has that report. Strawn said he was not aware of the specific claims, but recalled having discussions with the bank sometime in September when that financial institution sought permission to effect the transfer. He disclosed that permission was granted with the understanding that the pensioners would not be disadvantaged during the process. CABC came to us to see how best we can keep the pensioners, the value that would be transferred, uh, as whole as possible, and, and we 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 give permission to be able to effect the transfer. But obviously, if pensioners wish to, because um, the, the law, at pre- the the structure at present is that obviously, if you are required, if you're going to be withdrawing from your pension plan, effectively, that there is there is there is provision for um, withholding tax, mm-hmm. right? But so that's so that so, so that happens with any 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 of the current pension plans. So this they because they wanted to, to transfer them over to Sagicor, um without without because part of the portfolio was held in bonds. Right? Mm-hmm. That if they were to be transferred in the current situation, then the value of the pension would be diminished on the basis of the of the how the bonds were currently traded. Mm-hmm. If they had to cash them in, so we went through a whole exercise with the regulators to see how we can allow the the bonds to be transferred into a new pension scheme so that the payments will continue to be, rather than go to CBC, will go into the pension scheme as currently structured so that the person will not lose any value. Minister Strong said draft amendments were now being prepared by the Chief Parliamentary Council's office to facilitate those who want to continue without losing any value with the new providers who would be administering the pension plan. When they reached out to us, I we indicated that clearly they need to, to communicate. I know there are about 700 odd or so persons. Mm. And we, we said that obviously they needed to communicate with those persons um, what, what was intended. That was Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strong, and I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. Public health officials could soon determine whether a low-dose Pfizer vaccine against COVID-19 will be extended to children ages 5 to 11. That's according to Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George. The move, if agreed to, could potentially provide another layer of protection whenever face-to-face classes resume. As you know, the, um, the FDA out of the United States and the CDC have given approval for use of vaccines in their population. Barbados has examined the evidence. I think that PAHO, WHO is not there yet. So remember, we have multiple sources to examine. And once those sources are brought to the attention of the public health team, we will make a determination. But what I will tell you is that we are close to making a determination of approval of vaccines, Pfizer vaccines, for persons between the ages of 5 to 12. With respect to um, access to vaccines, I can announce today that Johnson & Johnson, we had a small set of Johnson & Johnson, and we have made a determination that those vaccines can be given to the general public. Meanwhile, the chief medical officer stressed that steps must be taken to ensure the gains made in public health over the years are not eroded because of the pandemic. He said conditions such as obesity, hypertension and diabetes needed to receive attention as affected persons are at greater risk of deterioration from COVID-19, especially when unvaccinated. Comorbid condition is a condition that adds risk 
to you with respect to an event. So a comorbid condition in Barbados is usually obesity. That's a big one. Hypertension and diabetes. And what we have seen and what we have reported to the um, persons in Barbados is that these persons are at greater risk. Their outcomes, particularly when unvaccinated, are not good. So that many of the, um, and, and we in public health say that uh, uh, a death should not occur before the age of 70. If it occurs before the age of 70, it is kind of like a, a, a life cut short. And the challenge we are having is we are seeing persons who are under the age of 70, but frequently have other diseases. The Caribbean Movement for Peace and Integration has called on residents to join in a march to protest the proposed increases in electricity bills. In a brief announcement posted on social media on Tuesday, the organization's general secretary, David Denny, said the match will take place on November 27th at 10 a.m. from Kensington Oval to Independence Square. The Caribbean Movement for Peace and Integration will object against the increases of Barbadians' electricity bill by the Barbados Lightning Power. especially at a time when we are all suffering from the COVID-19 situation. Our movement is not happy with the proposed plans by the Light and Power. Our movement is not happy with the granting of permission to Light and Power to increase our light bills before any hearing in relation to the proposals that Light and Power is proposing for the increases of, the, of light bills. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum. and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. The news from Mother Region in Grenada, Cabinet has taken a decision to lift some COVID-19 restrictions at the country's borders. More in this report from the GBN. Noting a steady increase in stillover visitors as well as the number of flights to Grenada, Tourism Minister Clarice Modest Cohen says Cabinet has taken a decision to further lift the restrictions at all borders. The Tourism Minister says the removal of the two-day quarantine period for fully vaccinated individuals who have a negative PCR test on arrival will take effect from Monday. Also, there are uh, one or two little issues that need, need to be ironed out um, as to how we're going to do things because we always have to um, be cautious about certain things. But the plan is to do away with quarantine for fully vaccinated persons. And within, within a week from now, that will happen so. Minister Mudas Cowen notes that changes must also be made to the regulations. And therefore, I, I believe that the removal of the quarantine requirement for fully vaccinated persons will certainly make a difference. Because in the industry, sometimes people come for two days, they come for a weekend. And if you have two days in quarantine, then 
you know, it's a waste of time. Um, and even if you have one week to lose two days. He said a major factor in this decision is the low positive case count witnessed over an extended period. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles says the total of imported cases is 132 from the 5,863 confirmed cases. And finally, the supply of immunization syringes needs to keep pace as the supply of COVID-19 vaccine improves. The warning from the World Health Agency amid concerns of a possible deficit of 1 to 2 billion immunization syringes in 2022. This according to Lisa Hedman, who is the Senior Advisor for Access to Medicines and Health Products at the World Health Organization, would then lead to a serious problem, such as slowing down of immunization around the world. If we're promoting equity in making vaccines available to the world, and we are promoting equity to make vaccines available, then we have to do the same with the syringes. There have already been more than 6.8 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines administered globally. Now, to give you a comparison, this is nearly double the number of routine vaccinations that are given per year, which of course means double the number of immunization syringes. A shortage of syringes is unfortunately a real possibility, and, and here's some more numbers. With the global manufacturing capacity of around 6 billion per year for immunization syringes, it's pretty clear that a deficit in 2022 of over a billion could happen if we continue with business as usual. One serious result of a shortage could be delays in routine immunizations and other healthcare services. And so here we're talking about the injections that we give as part of normal healthcare. Now it could have a public health impact for years to come if we have a generation of children who don't receive their childhood vaccinations. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.